Hello Nuggets. Um, I wanted to make a vi tw quick video today uh, about children and uh, why I don't have any. Um, I'm 49. My wife is roughly the same age. <laughs> In case she watches this. She's roughly the same age. So we're, 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 we're at 50, basically. Right? Uh, and we don't have any kids. Um, so we're... we're, we're have you ever heard the phrase dinky, double income, no kids? Well, we're ninkies. No income, no kids. Um, so we don't have children. And there's a little story behind that. And I thought I would put it down here for when uh, I get Alzheimer's. Because <laughs> I keep doing, I've been doing some posts about Alzheimer's. So now I'm thinking again, I'm going to get it. Um, or I already have it. Uh, so I can look back on this and remember why. I made that decision because sometimes I miss it. I really do. I think I would have been a good dad. I don't know. I, no. Okay. Other people think I would be a great dad. When I say I don't know, they're like, are you crazy? You'd be a great dad. Because I love playing. I'm, I'm a child still, right? And kids gravitate towards me. When I, when I go somewhere, I'm really playful and really silly. And, and I feel, I think they look at me like just like a big fat one of them. Because I am. I'm exactly the same. But I don't have any kids, and sometimes I regret that. Um, but there's a reason. So my wife and I tried for kids. She's my second wife. Uh, my first wife, Melanie, and I did not try for kids. Um, but Laura, my, uh, my, my real wife, <laughs> the one I'm getting it right with, I think, we tried for kids and we couldn't. So we went through uh, in vitro fertilization. Uh, we also went through adoption, an adoption agency. Oh, my God. Okay, I just remembered. I need to do some stuff on adoption as well. I need to do a blog on adoption because it's a nightmare and it's ridiculous. There's a problem that needs to be solved and this country makes it impossible to adopt children. Impossible. It's so freaking hard. Or it might just be state, but whatever. I mean, California, it's very hard and expensive. Anyway, so we did... Uh, in vitro and we tried insemination artificial insemination so one is literally where they just get a turkey baster and splooge my wife with my junk and then uh, the other one is actually where they you know they wash the sperm and they take the egg and they inject the egg and all that and we tried all uh, all of those none of them worked um, and then we just kind of stopped but despite trying I think the reason that we stopped and why we kind of didn't end up with kids is that both of us kind of feel that we're not destined to have them. Not by some ordained by some spiritual entity, but just that it's not who we are. And I can only speak for me personally here. The reason why I don't think I have kids is firstly that, and I'm, I'm saying this so I hope someone watches this and says, yeah, I get it. I'm the same, you know. And maybe it's a generational thing. Maybe it's Gen X's. Firstly, I feel that I'm a child. I just don't feel mature enough to do it. You know, I, I still wrestle with my adolescent mind all the time. You know, like I congrat, I pat myself on the back when I don't do stuff that would make me appear to be a fucking idiot. When I make what should be the normal adult choice, I feel that I deserve a pat on the back. I'm like, look at that. Look what an adult you are. I'm 50 and I still think that. So I reflect on that and think, oh my God, you can't be an adult. You can't be a father. Are you kidding me? These kids will be ruined. They'll be, you're, you're just not mature enough to bring them up. But then again, all my friends that have kids, I think were the same as me. And maybe having a child actually brings out of you the maturity and the adulthood because now you're forced to look after someone and you're forced to make decisions. I, I mean, I'll give you an example. When I don't like a job, when it's not working out for me, I quit. I don't care if I can't pay my mortgage. I don't care if I've kind of got lucky and fallen on my feet all the way through. But I don't really think forward. I think right now I'm unhappy. I'm living. I, I rarely look forward or backwards in anything. I very much live in the moment. I'm very present. And it's very, people, my friends like it. It seems like to be, I'm always there. I'm always like involved in the conversation and listening hard. But the downside to it is, is that I don't think about next week, right? So if I'm unhappy in a job, I leave. As a parent, you can't do that. I have lots of friends. My, my, my dearest friend, Jarrett, um, and Jarrett and Gillian, they work whatever work comes their way because they have to, and they would like to change their lives. But they are responsible for two amazing beautiful children god i get tearful when i think of them but they're, they're wonderful parents but i think it transformed them a little 
You know, I think they were more immature, like me. And the, 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 the parenthood, and they had a torturous journey getting to becoming parents. Very difficult journey. But I think once they reached there, I think it just, it, it really made them grow up, you know. Certainly Jarrett. <laughs> I hope you're watching this, mate. Um, Gillian always seemed very mature to me, but that might just be my, you know, my, my image of her. But I think it, it, it grows them up. But I worry that it wouldn't grow me up, that I would still be this person, you know. I have dogs, and I'm a, I'm a reasonably good dog owner, but I'm also very childish with them still. It hasn't grown me up. I know they're not the same as children. Um, but, yeah. Um, so that's one reason I didn't have kids um the second is i don't know how well i would have maybe this is still the first one related i don't know how well i handled the idea of having to change my life for someone else i think i'm a very selfish person i think i like to believe that i'm loving and i'm kind and i want the best for people you know and and i, I don't care about race you are what your sexuality is i just want everyone to be happy you know but I also don't go out of my way to protect that. I'm not the guy who goes to marches, right? When a few years ago, when the whole gay marriage thing was happening, it still is, it's always still happening, right? But, but where they were fighting for gay marriage, and I have a lot of gay friends who was uh, telling me about it, I was always supportive. And I was like, yeah, absolutely right. But if I'm honest, what was going on inside is, I don't care. I don't, care. I don't wish any harm for you at all. But I, don't, I just, I don't don't care i care that you're upset but in my heart i'm like no it's not really affecting me and i know that's ugly and i can't believe i'm saying this on camera i'm just trying to be as honest as i can that part of me that selfish part of me that feels at times a little bit sociopathic a little not sociopathic that's a heavy word for it but um a little bit um lacking in a bit of empathy um, but being able to portray empathy well enough that it makes the other person happy. So I do care how they feel. I will work hard to make sure that person feels that I love them and I care for them. But inside, deep down inside, I'm very good at just switching off. That's why things actually in general don't stress me. Like, I, 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 don't, get in, I don't get worried when I have to stand up in front of a crowd of people. I've had to give speeches before in front of very, very large crowds and conferences. Um, and I never get nervous. I don't. I mean a little bit, but not really, because in my heart, I'm like, I don't give a fuck about any of this. I don't care. What happens if this goes wrong? I just quit. I, like, I just, I'm, I'm irresponsible in that respect. I'm willing to walk away from things in order to keep number one happy, me, which is very selfish. And I think as a parent, I, I couldn't do that because I can't walk away. There's someone more important. Um, the other thing about not having kids sorry this is rambling a bit the other thing about not having kids that upsets me a little bit is I feel like I have never experienced that type of love because I don't think from what I hear from when I talk to my friends you you cannot get it unless you have a child you can I love my wife dearly she's my soulmate I mean it is perfect it really is I, I met the perfect person she laughs at everything I say She's kind and generous and she loves me. And it's just this wonderful relationship we have. I'm very proud of the marriage we've built. But I don't think it's the same as love of a child, right? Because I don't know if anything can be. Maybe love of a little dog. They're both in here. I've got to take them out. Um, so I miss that a little bit. Okay, so I didn't have children because I feel that I'm selfish, though. That's really what it comes down to. And I don't know if other people in, our, in my generation feel the same way. Or if maybe every parent always feels that until they're a parent. And it's not a generational thing. Maybe the baby boomers. Maybe the baby boomers felt the same way. And, you know, they thought like, well, I mean, they had their Woodstock, right? They're like, well, there's no way we can have a kid. We're just too immature. And then they had kids and they grew up, you know, and fucked up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Bitter adolescent still. Um, hmm. Yeah, so kids, I don't know, I just miss it sometimes. I was thinking of my godchildren, Jarrett and Gillian's kids, Liam and Nolan. I haven't seen them for a little while because I went through my circumcision. So we were going to go camping, but then I went, I, I had that and I've been offline and I'm back now almost completely. Um, and so I'm missing them and that made me think. Whenever I see them, I think about like, 
what if that were my kid? Because, I mean, their kids are wonderful. So they are the kids I would want. You know, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that's that's the kind of kid I would want to bring up. But I don't know if I could. They're good parents. I don't think I could be that. And I have other friends, Nikella and Jed, who are just fantastic parents. Their kids light up a room. They really do. And I've met some horrible kids. So it's not just like I find every child nice. There's some fucking terrible ones out there. And there's some terrible parents out there as well. Uh, but I in particular have two friends who I think are just astonishing parents. Just natural parents. Um... But they're very mature. And I've seen my other friend, Jed and Nikella. So I don't see them much, but I love them dearly. But they, their children, I've seen since their children were born, both of them have matured and they feel like they've just completely outgrown me. I still feel like a child and I look at them and I'm like, they're just so adult. They've got their shit together. You know, he's got a glowing career. She's bringing up the children and writing musicals and teach and educating at the school and just involved in the community like their lives have just blossomed enormously in a very mature way um and then i look at that and i think like well yeah mine hasn't and i wonder if that's because i haven't learned to be an adult yet because to be an adult you have to have a kid maybe that's what the name of this blog is to be an adult you have to have a kid Hmm. all right I just wanted to put it out there. It popped into my head. Cheerio.